What's poppin' ladies and gentlemen, how's everyone doing this uh, afternoon or morning or wherever you guys are in the world, hopefully it's still good. This is your boy The Iron Animal, new Brandon Rogers video just dropped and that is the second part of, uh, second of three parts of the Blood and Makeup series, Not For Kids. Now I did watch the first one and uh, it was hella funny, it was very very creepy and um, he did say in one of his videos that he said he may not continue it but uh, to see this pop up just now, so he's definitely going to continue it and I'm super excited because I thought the first one was just comedic gold so I'm really looking forward to see the rest of this one. So, uh, yeah, let me just be quiet and let me get this reaction started. Link to this video will be in the description down below. Support Brandon Rogers, support the official release, then come watch my reaction. Without further ado, let's uh, get this started, guys. Uh, the following program is intended for mature audience. It contains graphic, imagery, strong violence, blood, and much discreet, and much discreet, whatever the fuck. The, every description is advised. Yeah, we get it. Let me start. He's a monster. Whoa. He took away the only man who could rim his way to my heart. Approximately Whoa. Approximately three weeks into production, the head of Rick Harper was anonymously mailed to the TV studio he worked at. With standard shipping. A gruesome week in children's television as two crew members were brutally murdered just days apart from one another. Yeah, Police are investigating the show's host, Eddie Oswald, and his whorish puppeteer, Wendy Bundy, who both believe that despite these tragic events, the show must go on. The show will go on. How about that? Even if two of my beloved late that colleagues are, are currently getting more screen time than me. <laughs> Welcome back. Today we've got a great episode. And today, I mean it. I'm here with the man behind the clown that everyone is talking about, Eddie. You can call me Eddie. I did. Okay, let's move on. How does it feel to become a children's <laughs> TV icon overnight? Well, I'll tell you, Connie, it's a goddamn dream come true. Although, technically, we're not just a kid's show. We're actually produced by uh, Clive Butler, right over there from the Butler's Sweets and Shit Candy Company. He actually financed this entire show as a way to market the new Blah Blah Bars in stores in only a month. Did you murder Rick? Harper, Eddie. <laughs> I love that you right into it. I'm sorry? Your costumer, Rick Harper, you got into an argument at your house, and then his head was sent to your studio the next morning. Is that some sort of coincidence? I, I'd like to keep this about the blah blah bars, And this is just please. days after the very bizarre suicide of Deborah Tom, another crew member that you didn't get along with. You could tell Eddie was starting to crack. You know, every time he'd get stressed, he'd start eating that chocolate like it was ass. You were up there, wasn't the best. <laughs> he like his ass. This interview is over. Your mother created a very angry person, didn't she? You Damn. need to lose weight. Dr. Carl says I need to gain weight, Mom. Yeah, well, what? Dr. Carl is an in show business! All you needed was the pressures of your own show to make that inner child snap. Ooh, and just give me a comment. Did you kill Rick Harper? And Deborah Tomlin. You know what? I said this is over! Oh my god! I want you to look into that fucking camera and tell all of your viewers everything he spit out is bullshit! He's bullshit! The gossip, the lies! I want you to tell them it's all one big joke! It's all one big joke! Say it again, bitch. It's all a joke! It's all a joke! Oh my god! It's all a joke! It's all a joke! It's all a joke! It's all a joke! <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's all a joke! And you can find more of this tomfoolery Saturday mornings, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard. Blah, 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 So delicious you could just die. Get that girl from PDSD. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. Sorry, Three more bodies were found last night. The victims' faces were painted like clowns. Ladies and dicks, we're dealing with the goddamn psychopath. <laughs> I didn't know what hell was until I met Blah Blah the Clown. You do not want this man entertaining your children. You gotta love how the, the seriousness of it all, too. written in blood were the words of a real doo doo mouth. Look at him! That look! Like the face of the goddamn crazy man! Damn! <laughs> The last laugh of Bubba the Clown. Eddie's little media prank wasn't helping my company's image. 
And you know how hard it is to convince kids you're not going to kill them? I do. It's quite hard. Blah, blah. Did you really kill those people? Oh, now, Percy, you know it wouldn't harm a fly. I know, but I'm sure they would have deserved it. They did deserve it. It wasn't working. And we only had one month left before the blah, blah bars hit the grocery stores and we need to clean up this PR nightmare. How? Everyone thinks I murdered that fucking asshole. You did murder that fucking Be asshole. With me. Did you? You can't be serious. It's not too late to pin it on one of the kids. I can understand what Eddie was going God through. Clown <laughs> paint has a way of getting under your skin. I should know. I created Blah Blah the Clown when I was 18. So you effectively killed two people. You Angeles created the monster. With a dream of becoming a successful <laughs> clown who doesn't diddle the children. Little did I know it was my heart that would be diddled when I met Cassandra Butler. She owned a small candy shop down on Melrose in Fairfax. We were perfect for each other. I'd teach her how to clown around, and she'd teach me how to make candy sweeter than an angel's kiss. Oh, and we made the 80s our bitch. She made the candies, <laughs> and I did the clowning to sell uh, them on TV. Only I'd known, but I'm not. I'll go the 90s. Then one day, she created it. The Blah Blah Bar. The most delicious chocolate I've ever tasted in my life. We must have whipped up and devoured a batch of 30 bars that night alone. Ew. We were going to release it the day after we got married. But that day never came. Oh shit, it's been recording the whole time. <laughs> she died with the recipe of that blah blah bar. I was able to keep the candy company in business, but nobody gave a rat's dick about my clowning anymore. Rat's it was dick. just a corporate <laughs> fool Ew. trying to live out his glory days. Until six months ago, I found an old box of Cassandra's belongings, including the recipe I'd been trying to recreate for three decades. I began production on the Blah Blah. You don't even look that old, dude. I just needed a fresh new face to be Blah Blah again. And so I understand why Eddie's angry. Clowning is a very serious business. That's great. I still have. A headless homo in my hands. Crime's no joke, and I'm no comedian. I take my job about as seriously as I take an anal fissure. Ew. And that's that's pretty serious. Look who got sloppy. You know, I always said in my years of the field that murderers are some of the dumbest. Don't tell my captain. I question the only person who was with Rick that evening, his husband. I just told her it wasn't me. Which was a relief. Because then I only had one more suspect. Look, whore, I didn't do it. Eddie, no one is suggesting that you are definitely the killer, but we want to get a sense of I am not a killer! But if I was, I would have slit him gut to gullet, and I would have told you I didn't do it! The trail had gone cold. I was out of suspects. Until wow, yeah, you're, you're dumb, Eddie. Just lady. before leaving the station, Eddie decides to stop for a little pee-pee time. Moments after, one Officer Ramirez enters that same restroom, the only difference was that Eddie was the only one to come out. An LAPD officer was found dead tonight with his goddamn throat slashed open. And that's all I needed <laughs> to put that Pepto Bismol pencil dick away. I didn't oh do my it. god. My son was a little ass puke, and sooner or later <laughs> everyone was gonna see it. Seeing my best oh my friend god. in handcuffs? Now that's hard. And yes, I know that's what she said, but Eddie did not kill a cop. I was slightly relieved. Uh, just the day before, I was cataloging all of my evidence when I checked the time, destroying all my evidence. Really, so I had bitch? To create all of my evidence, none of which would have held up in court. So, I mean, I suppose it was a blessing that Officer Ramirez was. Detective P had her head up her B. When Eddie found out she lost the she evidence, she clearly did. He was pretty upset. God damn it! Now I'm pretty upset. What are we gonna do? <laughs> I don't know. That detective P has her head up her B. Uh, I'm totally gonna use that one later. It's a good joke, Daniel. There's no denying that. But now there's nothing to prove my innocence. You need to get a lawyer, okay? You're right. And I know just the guy. Did you kill somebody? No, you didn't. Shut the fuck up. Your Fifth Amendment oh, right is so dude. precious to me. I'll fucking kill you to defend it. And thanks to that right, I don't have to tell a fucking soul. So give me a call. <laughs> I'll defend you so hard that I'll have to plead the fifth. <laughs> you know what you pay for? <laughs> and Eddie didn't feel like paying too much. <laughs> what the fuck did he say about me? Be honest with me. Did you do it? Of course I didn't do it. Eddie, I represent killers, not liars. You can't think I'm guilty. I don't think you're guilty, I just think you did it. Okay, we're gonna lose That's this. And if I'm going to die, then I have one last request. Oh, wow. Talk to the warden. Let him let me shoot one final episode of Blah Blah. We can do it right here in this jail. 
The request seemed innocent, but I knew there was something much more sinister at play. When I heard Eddie wanted yeah. to shoot an episode from prison, I immediately said, I'm not paying for it. I, I just didn't understand why he would want anyone to see him that way. Good morning, children. You're not letting me do too much today. But that's all right, because we have a very special episode in store. What's on today's agenda, blah, blah? Today, I'm getting the fuck out of jail. Oh, God. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Eddie was bolted to the table, and that guard did not have a lick of keys on him. He doesn't have any keys. There's no time. Plan B, plan B. I don't want oh, God. Plan B. Cut his hands off. Let's land it. Yep. Ah! Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, God damn, bro. I don't even know where to go. I don't even know where to start with this one. I have, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. I just love that, like, it's funny as fuck, but it has a legitimate serious tone to it. Like, it has that, it has that serious tone, but, like, with a touch of Brandon Rogers in it, that just completely makes it his own. I just think it's amazing. And goddamn, like, you know, I figured he was going to do that, just cut his hands off. So, like, I'm now super excited to see how this last one's going to end, because they finally got him, but now he's busting out of prison. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know where this is going to go. Like, I'm really excited to see the last part of this, so I'm really glad he's continuing the series. Uh, it was a good episode. It was really funny. I enjoyed it. Uh, other than that, I don't really have much to talk about. I just enjoyed it all around. And once again, can't wait for part three. Anywho, guys, um, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys have anything else you want me to react to, leave it in the comment section down below. Put up post notifications so you don't miss what I do. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow me on all my social medias, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you guys. Stay awesome.